Standard ACLs can use ACL numbers 1 through 99, but they also have an extended range of uh, 1300 through 1999. Um, so depending on the, the router's firmware, it may allow ACL filtering of IP only, or uh, it may actually include support for the other um, protocols like IPX, uh, DECnet, and Apple Talk. Um, you know, you'll have to actually look in your, your router. You, you know, you can check it when you're trying to set up an ACL or just look at the firmware and compare it on Cisco's website to determine whether it's, it's got support for, uh, for just IP or for those others. Um, nowadays, I mean, most networks are only really going to need support for IP. There's not, um, you know, in my experience at least, not a whole lot of people still running on some of those other protocols. Uh, always apply standard ACLs closest to the destination. So configuring standard access lists, um, start by create, creating the ACL and applying the permit and deny statements in order. So uh, from global configuration mode, access dash list space the number of the ACL, and again that can be you know, any of the numbers we talked about before, 1 through 99 or 1300 through 1999, um, space, and then your uh, Permit, deny, or remark. Uh, permit and deny are kind of apparent. You know, permit allows the traffic to go through. Denies stops the traffic from going through. Remark is just a, a little um, description. Like it, it doesn't actually apply any any kind of command. It just uh, you know gives you a description. Like if you wanted to list after every permit and deny statements or remark to say that I'm blocking this traffic for this and I'm blocking this traffic for this. It's just a way of being more descriptive, I guess, in your ACLs. Um, so access dash list space the ACL number the permit or deny statement space and then the uh, either the IP address with a wildcard mask host or any so um, IP with a wildcard mask for ACLs we're always going to use the the wildcard subnet mask not the normal subnet mask um, if you remember some of the stuff we talked about before one of the easiest ways to get the wildcard subnet mask is to take a subnet mask of all 255, so you know 255.255.255.255, and subtract whatever the actual subnet mask is, and that's going to give you the wildcard mask. So if you have a um, a slash 30, it's 255.255.255.252. If you subtract that out of all 255s, you're going to be left with 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.3. So that'd be your your wildcard mask. So that's a uh, you know, quick little tip on finding the, the wildcard mask uh, quickly. And always remember, too, that ACLs are always going to use the wildcard mask. Don't put the subnet mask in, or you're going to have a completely different uh, range of IPs that gets permitted. And it's probably going to uh, screw up the functionality of your router. Um, then your other two options, host and any. Um, host is when it's only a single IP address that you're trying to filter rather than like a, a subnet with multiple IPs. So if you wanted to filter out, you know, let's say you wanted to filter out the popular um, DNS server, not that you would want to, 4.2.2.2, your statement would be access dash list space, your ACL number, let's say it's ACL1, so access dash list one, uh, deny host 4.2.2.2. So that's, that's how the host thing works. It's just applying it to a single IP rather than a full subnet mask of IPs. And then the any statement just applies to any IP, you know, the full range of IPs. You could also, um, to kind of act as a uh, host and any actually are both kind of shortcuts because you could use an IP address with a wildcard mask to specify those. You know, for, uh, for a host, you could put the IP and then a wildcard mask of all zeros, 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0, .0. You're going to get the same effect as using the word host. And likewise with any, if you uh, used it, an IP and wildcard of 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 for your IP and uh, all 255s for your uh, your subnet mask or your wildcard mask, you're going to get the, uh, the same effect. So those are just kind of shortcuts. Um, once you've created the, the ACL, apply the ACL in the inbound or outbound direction of the appropriate interface. Um, so, you know, right here, router from global configuration mode, interface, in this case, zero, serial 00, zero, jumps you into interface configuration mode, and then the command structure is IP space access dash group space the number of the ACL, and then whether you're applying it in the in direction or the out direction. Um, you know, so from a, a serial interface, it's going to be like a T1 interface on your router. 
if it's uh, applied inbound, it's traffic coming from the public internet into your router. If it's outbound, it's coming from your router out to the public internet or wherever that, that serial interface is, um, is terminating at. Being able to kind of keep track of you know, what is inbound and what is outbound on each of those interfaces is really key whenever you're trying to set these up. Um, and here is, uh, here's kind of a diagram we're going to use for some examples of standard ACLs. So right here we've got uh, three routers and three networks. So you've got router Maggie, Homer, and Marge. And then you've got networks one, two, three, and then also a connection to the public internet as well. So in, the, in this example, we want to restrict access between networks one, two, and three and the internet in some cases. Uh, if making changes to an ACL on the fly, make sure to remove that ACL from the interface that is applied to, especially if it is restricting the interface you're using to access the router. So apply the no space IP space access dash group in the ACL number um, while you're in interface configuration mode. The reason we ask you to do that is if you if you try to make changes to an ACL, it, like I said, especially if you're using that interface to access the router there's a fairly high probability you could make a change that's going to kick you out of the router and uh, keep you from, from making any other changes. Also another good reason to set a, a reload in events like this, but it's also a really good idea to just remove that ACL altogether while you make changes to it and then reapply it when you're done. Um, removing an ACL with the no space access dash list ACL number command does not remove the application of the list on an interface, but it does overrule the implicit deny state at the end of the list until an, another line is added to the ACL. So, um, so this example restricts network one from accessing network three. So once again, you got um, network one over here. You got network three over here. You're going to have to um, apply, you know, a a change on either the the Homer and Marge routers now. Remember, you're going to want to place that uh, that configuration change closest to the the destination. So, um, what was it? Uh, restricting network one from accessing network three. So, we're going to apply it on the the Homer router in this case. Uh, oh, Pass one. So, um, fast Ethernet zero zero. Got it right there. So uh, access dash list 30 deny 172.16.50.0 with a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255. .0 .0 .0 um, that creates the, the access list uh, number 30. It creates a deny statement for this 172.16.50.0 block. Um, and it's going to have an implicit deny statement after that. So that's all they did to actually create it. And then uh, access dash list 30 permit any adds a, a second statement directly after this one that permits any traffic except for this. And then following that, you're going to have your implicit deny statement. Um, and then the next two lines basically apply it to an interface. So interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 IP access dash group 30 out. So in the fast ethernet FA00. Uh, that is closest to your destination. You're restricting this network from getting to this network. So remember, standard ACLs we want to apply closest to the destination. When we start talking about extended ACLs, they're the opposite. Extended ACLs you want to apply closest to the source. So if we were um, if we were just configuring on Homer, if it was an extended ACL, we'd be applying it on uh, serial 00. But since it's a standard ACL, we want it to apply it closest to the destination over here. So it's applied on uh, fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. It's also applied in the outbound direction. So you know, for fast Ethernet 0, 0, um, the inbound direction is in toward the router to go back out this way. The outbound direction is to go back this way. So we've applied it on the outbound uh, direction. And it's, gonna, it's preventing 172.16.50.0.4 uh, dot zero uh, slash 24. So basically uh, traffic from here with that ACL applying, traffic from network three is going to, if it tries to get to any any of the hosts on network one, it'll go to the Marge router, it'll be routed to the Homer router, it'll be routed toward the fast zero zero uh, interface of the Homer router, and then that ACL will see that it has a match statement and it will deny the traffic. So it'll, it'll drop right there before it makes it outbound on 